MGTOW, avoid all confronts. One of the things I want to say on this is you get some infighting on the MGTOW stuff, and I even see it on here a little bit, because um, I'm not a MGTOW um, flag waver in this sense of, although I promote it and understand it, etc. I'm married, so at the end of the day, I can understand what people are talking about, and at the end of the day, some people go, but like, you can't do this because you're married, and yes, but also my wife's from Asia, and I've experienced pretty much everything you talked about, it's many of the reasons that people get into MGTOW. I understand it fundamentally, and that's the point, that's why I can discuss this stuff. Also, a lot of guys may not actually um, be 100% MGTOW, they may actually be looking for a partner. And I do think they have better options by meeting women from other countries. Um, but you've got to understand that many countries are changing as well because of globalization, the internet, and other things. So you've got to take that into account as well. But I do not think that from a MGTOW point of view, we have to be confrontational. Because at the end of the day, I would say that's what a lot of these, let's say, the feminists... Um, justice warriors, whatever they call media justice warriors or whatever. They, they, the bizarre thing is, there's a very simple thing that pretty much works on the majority of these people. Look at them directly. You don't have to engage with them. As I said before, that when I analysed um, a counsellor up in Scotland when she was pushing forward her views on X, Y, Z, her reality is very very narrow she's very biased she picks her charities she picks where she does her um, volunteering etc based on her own choices at the same time for her to have this interest in specific groups and at the same time demanding that other people should be equal and stuff just becomes completely farcical because you can't do that. You know, at the end of the day, a lot of these people are the most prejudiced people you'll meet on the planet. They're not even involved in 90% of the time their own grouping. They have their own agenda and they probably find conflict in their own groups and simply won't engage with them. So, why do we engage with them? My answer, we don't have to. We don't have to at all. What, so... Some woman demands X, Y, Z, and it's uh, like a, a third bathroom. And then you say, well, I, I want a MGTOW toilet as well, because I think men should be able to go their own way. Well, that, you're just mocking me. No, I think that's perfectly reasonable in the same way. Because, I mean, my personal view is there should be unisex toilets and just say, forget it all. It's all unisex. Forget it. I don't want to know. Um, because at the end of the day, a lot of this stuff is very trivial. And they're not dealing with people that could be a problem for them, in the sense that they're not going into places like uh, Afghanistan, Syria, where else could we go, Iraq, um, to dispute women's rights. No, they're bothering you about having a third toilet. If that's what you've got to complain about, your life's pretty good. Nothing to complain about whatsoever. The freedom of being able to whine and complain about something so trivial is something that people that are really oppressed don't have. And personally, like I'm saying, don't engage with them. MGTOW does not need that engagement. MGTOW needs things like this. I'm not saying I have to push all this stuff, because like with Benjamin's channel, he's showing his way of life and what he's doing, how he's getting his retirement budget and everything set up. That sort of stuff is very useful for other people to be um, seeing how you can push your life forward in the MGTOW realms. Um, and the, the one of the things I will say though, I do think with MGTOW, although it's men go their own way, I do think that it is important that people actually engage with each other. Um, because not everything is about simply just going your own way. Even if it's down at horticulture, permaculture, uh, aquaponics, um, real estate, financial investing, car mechanics, doesn't really matter. It's the broader spectrum of things. It doesn't mean you need to completely go your own way. A lot of it is actually 
being able to get to where your goal is and maybe paying it back as well, encouraging other people to do the same. There is no issue related to men going their own way. People use this thing, well, what about the population growth? What about this? You know what? The breeders will breed. If anything, it's probably the biggest problem in many environments is that we're, we're having in it a growing idiot population. And I know people may actually find that offensive I said that, but at the end of the day, reality is we're having a lot of people that are uneducated people don't want to get educated and think they'll be the next rapper or something on Britain's Got Talent or whatever and at the same time can't even manage to make a burger at McDonald's. These numbers are growing because at the end of the day we live in a benefit society that is funded predominantly by people that work, male and female. Um, but the problem you get with the MGTOW stuff, a lot of the guys also recognize the bit is when there's that separation from the two that are working as well is often the guy that ends up paying the way as well on that one, which is why men go in their own way. It dis disconnects them from that system. One of the things I recognized years ago was disconnecting myself from the day-to-day. -day. Going to the Philippines unlocked Pandora's box in many ways because I was allowed to have time to think. Back in the UK, I was working up to 16 hours a day, plus on call, plus weekends, etc. And was focused 100% on business, well, 95% business, 5% family life. As such, family life wasn't great, and business life, everybody just seen you as a shirt doing your job. So, bland, boring, dull, uninteresting, uneventful. Um, but, with the opportunity of going to the Philippines, stepping out of it, redeveloping and reconfiguring my life, you start to see, don't need to be earning as much money. How much of it actually disappears on tax? It's a ridiculous amount. You analyze that yourself. You may find you're in a job that pays less, you actually have more money. Bizarrely, that is true. Um, the UK, for example, child benefit. There's one, over 50,000 a year, you don't get it and you get taxed to death. But under under 50K, you get child benefit and some other stuff as well. You know, you might be able to get child education vouchers and things like that. Um, the point being is they've developed a benefit system that plagues people that work for a living. Um, but in the Philippines, you're responsible for yourself. You get sick, you pay your way, or you die. In the Philippines, you can sit on a lower budget, pay your rent, pay your whatever, and you can sit and configure your life to go forward. You can sit and analyze, learn coding, do whatever. In the West, that sort of stuff is very, very difficult because the rat race is upon you. Reliable car for work, reliable um, regular income to pay your taxes, your electric, your water in it. Oh yeah, you have that in the Philippines, but as a Westerner, it's much easier to earn a regular, smaller amount that goes much further than it is to earn a good amount in the West to fund a basic lifestyle. Um, this is why when I say to people, stay, stay at your parents as long as possible, maybe buy a house and don't tell them or whatever, there's nothing wrong with that. Because what you're doing is getting other people to pay the rent and get the house paid for before you decide to commit to move. It's destabilizing that cycle of life where you have your you get educated you get your first crappy job you meet somebody you have kids you get a house you you get to get a 25 year mortgage you then extend the house because you have kids and you constantly caught in the cycle of debt there's no need to do that no need to do that when I was going to Lincoln to survey um, Siemens turbines, the car I had only cost 300 pounds. And the thing is, the other guys turn out, one of the guys driving a uh, Porsche 911, another guy's uh, got a brand new um, Ford Ranger. And at the same time, I'm thinking, what a waste of money. The 300 pound car, stereo didn't work, so I used to go there with the iPod on. Fan belt was quite noisy as well. But you know what? It lasted the contract. Put it in for its MOT, failed and everything, scrap it. Was I bothered? 
not at all. During that time, I recovered um, way more than the car was worth, just in fuel. You know, at the end of the day, getting paid mileage to drive your car to work is quite good. It fills your pockets up very easily. Um, I was finding that, I think within two weeks, the car was paid for, just in what I'd recovered from fuel. A little diesel metro, clapped out on its last legs, but it did its job. It beat me to the moon and back. Those sort of things where companies say, you must have a car that is under five years old. This is in a lot of FM contracts. That if you work for them, if you use your own car, it's got to be under five years old. Um, it's got to have this, it's got to do that, blah, blah, blah. External contractor, drive what I like. And do you know what? I'm parked in a Mollick Story car park. They don't even know what car I'm driving. And this is the stupidity in a lot of this stuff that you're driven into by working for other people. But if you disconnect, you can start to see where you can see savings, where you're spending money, reevaluate um, how to get rid of debt and everything else. Vention, for example, I see is doing a lot more on the agricultural side for, for home living. I'm all for that. I 100% agree with them on that because at the end of the day, there is more than one thing going on here. It's not just about sustainability. It's a hobby. It's an interest. It's something that you can, I mean, for myself, because I'm married, um, you can pass on to children and educate them on food and things. A lot of that stuff is good, missing. Everything's becoming corporate. Everything. You buy a mobile phone these days, a lot of them you can't remove the battery. You look at Apple Macs, they seal them up, so they've got to go to their specialist shops unless you sit on YouTube and get some tools to dismantle the thing and are willing to risk that. Um, but ultimately, we're living in an environment where we're constantly played. We're told this, told that. And this is why I do think MGTOW needs to work together in recognizing stuff that we simply don't need. Stuff that we are threatened with. Stuff that fear is putting into us about. When in reality, it's a complete lie. I see stuff related to littering in the UK, which is quite funny recently, because they're talking about the, the, the fines that are being issued when they're not legally allowed to issue them. And I've seen stuff related to bailiffs on the similar thing as well, where the police will actually try and get them past your, your threshold of the door. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not talking about encouraging people in debt and not paying it or whatever. <laughs> what I'm saying is, a lot of this stuff has come around because people are so unfamiliar with the laws, they do not protect themselves. With bailiffs, don't answer the door. Always go out the back door. Things like that. Not that, I mean, like I said, I'm not encouraging it, I'm just saying a lot of people do not understand the laws and how they work and the difference between common law, etc., etc. Um, but ultimately, there is nothing wrong with guys within MGTOW helping each other. And the bits I was talking about bailiffs there, I can understand some people getting in those scenarios because they're being ripped off by courts, being uh, ripped off by exes, etc., and fundamentally may not be able to financially move forward at this time. Guess what? You can get involved in the legal side, understand the legal side, see what the implications are. One of the biggest things that will, the legal system will always say to you, but what if you need money in the future? Because there's one thing they fear, I mean, especially in the UK, is there's one word that they do not want to hear. The word is bankruptcy. They do not want bankrupt people. Bankrupt goes to zero. They will not recover nothing. They do not like that word. What they want is to reassess. Come in, come in. We will find a solution for this. Do not walk away, do not, shut, do not, not pay. Uh, you can give us a pound a week even, give us something. Do not go bankrupt. And the thing is, a lot of people don't understand that. A lot of people get a lot of stress, a lot of people commit suicide, etc. You do not need to get into that. I need to do a video on this, actually. Anyway, MGTOW, work together. We do not need to confront anybody else, leave them to it. What we need to do is actually focus on our group. And like I said, if you, want, if, you, if you see these people confronting people, you just have to look into them. I mean, you just look like their Twitter feeds, what do I do, what do da 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 da. 
and you'll find there's a lot of stuff that simply very very specific to themselves self-orientated individuals we do not need that